and welcome back to my favorite channel. Well, it's because it's mine, The Games. <laughs> it's also yours too. That's why I do this, gamers. Really exciting episode here, Star Citizen. I have for you. We're going to talk about one of my favorite aspects to the game: repair and maintenance. It brings about the question of how will this affect the economy? We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the fact that we are actually creating a career. We're creating an engineering type role and a mechanic type role into the game with actual minerals that are found from actual ore fields from explorers that find them in space. So you get it from space directly to the trade division, which we are currently in. I thought it only proper that you see the ships flying outside so you understand that this role will affect the economy in a huge, massive way, which nobody talks about on YouTube, gets into, dabbles in, that's why you watch the channel here. If you want to look about, uh, if you want to uh, watch a great video uh, that was done earlier by the games, there we go, by myself. Check it out. We have two videos about the economy. We also have a video about exploration, which was mentioned, and a video about uh, careers. So, all of which got plenty of views. Let's chill now since I'm not able to play the 2.0 PTU. Let's just get some chill mode swag, West Coast vibe to the bar so we can sock at the bar. And then we'll talk about this. Let's just do this right. Yeah. Hope you're feeling it. Look at that swagger. Look at those moves. Mm -hmm. Best open doors. There you are. that little musical interlude <laughs> i really like what they're doing with the game i like how far it's come i'm super happy with the progression of the game and now let's just oh it's kind of empty today most days it's not today we kind of got the bar to ourselves. i always dig uh the vibe up in here and uh this is my favorite place to be when i go to any bar just chill out get a couple drinks and uh you know they need to introduce some women characters to the game, please. Uh, let's see what's on TV here. Uh-huh. Oh, look at that. The games. They're watching the games. <laughs> let's talk a little bit about repair maintenance. And the new ship to be entered, which is the Crucible, which I find fascinating. We will do a, a review on that ship. So now, on to the details. Enough of this, Al. And here we go, the ship repair and maintenance uh, information that was released a few days ago by SIG. I had a chance to kind of pour over it, and um, I'm going to give you my opinions and my thoughts on it, as I always do on this channel. I am very happy to see a, um, what I want to say actually, uh, this genre being brought about into the game, because a lot of games don't employ this properly, a lot of games don't even think about this uh, particular angle to a game, which is to take items and to keep them existing alive in the game. Uh, what do I mean by that? You know, like a lot of times a ship blows up, you buy a new ship, the ship's done, and there's no more actual thought put into it other than it just disappeared and went to, you know, to uh, ship heaven or item heaven, and you just buy another item, silly, you know. But on this particular uh, instance, what they're trying to develop here is a whole economy, a whole new... Um, I want to say almost like a subsect to the game by, by bringing about a class of player, by bringing about a, a, an employment of sorts, mechanic, uh, engineer. Not only will you be able to, um, you know, take these ships and basically patch them up in space so they can get to a proper docking facility and, and be ship shape. Uh, we're talking about all forms of repair, just not one type of repair, you know, where you apply an item to the ship and then boom, you know, it's fixed. No, we're talking about the ingredients that it takes to actually repair the ship and the um, quality of the repair. You know, this is super detail oriented. When I hear this, it scares me because it makes me think, you know, maybe it's a little too big for any game to take on. 
But then I think about Star Citizen. I think about, you know, what in the past have they not tried to take on uh, full on and done improperly? And it's so still very early in this alpha stage or this beta stage that you don't know exactly how it's going to be employed in the alpha. And I'm sure there'll be tons of fixes down the line. But let's really get into this. Uh, what they're talking about here is like that this is creating a repair role to a game. Okay, there's been other games that have done this. I don't think necessarily on this scale. They're actually saying, okay, there are going to be uh, two types of uh, job roles in this game. Not only will there be just repairing it, but there's going to be a repair arm operator that, that, that uses this particular item that will actually repair ships. And then there's a repair task manager. So the manager takes the data from the screen and he's looking at it as far as what items are needed to have a successful chemical mix inside this arm. It injects it onto the ship and then, you know, prefabs it almost like a CAD program uh, it's, it's, it's probably the very same specs that you see when you actually are looking at the three-dimensional models on the ship's specification screen within uh, the Robert Space site, which is really a very interesting concept. You know, you're, you're looking at the schematics of a ship that have been designed by a designer, and now you're in the game looking at those same schematics, and the schematics are telling you, okay, this is what it takes to build the wing to uh, the Gladius. You know, let's just picture it up in here. So here we got the spe specifications to the um, repair task manager. And then the repair arm operator looks at it and says, okay, great. I'm going to go physically do the fix while the repair task manager, you know, inserts the, what do we say, the actual materials, the materials that were, that were pulled from, uh, space you know that that's the cool thing you know or that was found in space by explorers mined by miners brought in by uh different types of traders and and space truckers to stations that were sold and now we as engineers are looking at it and saying well okay we've got the finished product we got to stack certain amounts on the ship so that we can handle certain types of repairs uh you know what ships are going to have like these types of arms no none of these ships are except larger ships will have these types of arms or ships that are designed for actual repair rules like the crucible that i will be doing a video on in the future so that's one thing to think about when you're looking at repair type oriented roles that there are certain items within smaller ships that do very basic tasks when it comes to plugging up holes and we will go over that later that you can see like small handheld operated uh, tools that will that will let you fill in gaps smaller ones but when it comes to large repairs you will need a ship and that ship is is the crucible from what i have uh, you know, uh, found. I'm sure there'll be other ships with this particular type of repair role. I really was a big fan of the Crucible, and I can't wait to do that video for everybody out there. Uh, next, you look at the repair task manager and what he sees. This is the data that he sees. He's he's looking at uh, not only the internal schematic kind of uh, damage report, but also the topical. So you know, it's basically the damage assessment. Here's also what he sees: the material panel, exactly what I was talking about earlier. Repairs taking place in a workshop. This will be on the screen. This is fascinating. Love the fact that they're getting this detail oriented in it. It takes this much brain work to actually be an engineer. I like the fact that this can actually be a sold uh, process. This can be a service for others. You don't want to buy a whole new ship with all the credits it's going to take to buy the whole new ship. Now they're making it viable that you are actually looking for an engineer. I don't want to pay, you know, you know, God only knows how much credits this is going to translate to. If you're paying a hundred dollars actual real life for a ship, then what are the credits going to cost? I can guarantee you at least tenfold. And, uh, I don't want to buy a new ship. I just want to repair what I have, please. This is a huge role in the game. A lot of naysayers on the career video, uh, that was mentioned earlier that I did where they where the, where I had a mechanic role as a career. And people said, Dude, nobody's going to do the mechanic role. Are you crazy Al? No, no. <laughs> here it is right here. Rest assured. When I say something, I know what I'm talking about. You look at these materials. They're giving you all the different types of compounds and with the compounds that you have, there are various types of qualities of these compounds depending upon how these were refined. We're talking super amounts of detail here. If you actually go to this page, which I have the link down in the description below, you'll be able to read more about this particular thing. I'm not going to get too far into this because I get the, I'm just giving you the gist so that you understand that this particular 
career is something that's exciting to me because it does affect the economy directly. You are going to have these actually being needed as we discussed and talked about on the economy video. I'm very happy to see that they are listening to this community that uh, these items that are mined actually have a use after they are refined and brought to the market and that people are going to buy them on the market and actually use them and put them back into the environment. And then, you know, vice versa, I'm sure salvage will play an interesting role in this as you salvage pieces and parts also because of the way that they have itemized uh, the game, that everything is an item that can be packed in as we talked about on the uh, grabby hands video, which I thought was, you know, like that was ages ago and look how far they've come with this. Now, they're actually showing here the reconstruction of a wing on a gladius. I mean, this is kind of really cool. If you look at the three-dimensional aspect that it's missing and it notices that the AR overlay is showing, okay, here's the particular type of uh, section of the wing that's missed. Here, we're going to look at building it. And boom, look at the, look at the uh, frame construction picture here where it's actually building the wing that is missing. Uh, it's really fascinating. And then uh, we talk about the repair arm operator rule where you're stripping down the hull uh, for the integrity of a ship's hull that's sustained. It sustain light damage. Uh, it can be patched in stripping mode. The repair arms high power laser is used to cleanly remove parts of a component surface without causing structural damage. So basically cleans and strips it like you would an actual mechanic shop and then it layers the compound and everything on top of the part that needs patched up. So it's prepping the area. It's getting it ready for the patchwork. Here comes the patching. Boom, it's laying it down with the arm operator and both rules are going to be very important and you will see here that now I'm not too sure how you know detailed this is going to get but I would like to actually see the arm operator screw up a few times you know like oh no you know like to, to actually become a good arm operator I just don't want this to be point and click I actually want the arm operator to have to like you know take his time with this to do the repair properly I just don't want this to be point and click and I don't think that's uh, how they're actually building it up to be which is another reason why I like Star Citizen this is not just your simple point and click uh, interface this is something where people are going to have to take the time to do the repairs so again I think one of the, uh, I, I think what I'm trying to give you guys here is a good interpretation of what ship maintenance and uh, ship repair and maintenance is going to, to to be in the game it's going to be rather large and uh, would also be very cool to have your own shop not only just your ship floating out in their space like a crucible but also be cool to have like shops planet side uh, where ships come down that, that, that are looking for better repairs than the ones that are going to be offered by those out in space. Um, you know, if you think about it and you're out in space, you just, you if you're in a crucible, say you don't have to have the best compounds, but you can charge the best compound premium prices because these people are out in space. They need you. If they don't have a patch or they don't have uh, the repairs that are needed to get them to a dry dock, uh, or then they're screwed. Now the uh, crucible actually does have a docking station within the ship, which is also cool. We will talk about that again on a, on a later video. So uh, my my apologies there, as the crucible does have a basically a dry dock where uh, hornets and those types of class of ships can lock into the clamshell based. Uh, garage area so we'll, we'll talk about that later but for the most part you can use the what what I would say like economically speaking to be very smart if I were somebody who's offering repairs would be to take uh, like lower grade quality <laughs> you know uh, uh, ingredients that, that would be a pet like a basic patch and then charge like high-end prices because you're buying on the low side you're selling on the high side these people just need to get somewhere so anyway, field repair tools, we were talking about personal multi-tools for smaller patching that can be done. Uh, obviously, these are not going to be building you a wing on a Gladius anytime soon. Component damage, okay? So ships taking damage basically is talking about uh, components distributing damage uh, between themselves when when a subcomponent is attached to it. If, if one, I mean, this is this is my this is like getting into minutia here, but basically is saying if there is any minor damage within the components or the subcomponents, that those damages will uh, filter through to other systems and then cause more damage to. So you know, like kind of like a, deg a degradation or a degrading uh, form of damage that's like over time. And then you have uh, the module racks, which also is very cool as what I've read here states that certain class ships will have the ability to take these module racks and take like, for instance, um, let's say a subcomponent types uh, of a Gladius laser cannon. 
uh, where, where you have a coolant rod, okay? And you can take the uh, Gladius Lasers Cannon coolant rod, uh, coolant rod and put it into a Hornet's uh, coolant rod. Uh, a, a shield generator section apologies uh, so so you have like a coolant rod that's not only able to go into the gladius laser, laser cannon slot and and be a, a, a coolant reactant rod but also can can do the same uh, as as a uh, item that would work inside of a rod for a shield generator on a uh, hornet so you, you have more flexibility with these particular types of items these are items that on larger ships will have module racks inside the ships uh, creating an engineering type room and larger ships again a lot of people said no it's not going to happen here we go and uh, on the smaller ships will be in like hatches or panels uh, underneath so you will need uh, to stock items like these on larger ships again creating a uh, viable economy for this particular sect of um, of the realm of star citizens so all in all super happy what they're doing super happy to see that they're putting this much thought into it you know is it going to be something that is going to be uh, is it going to be absolutely necessary there's going to be people that, that want to fly around that don't want to get into all this and you know what they're going to have to know a little bit of it if they're flying around in it uh but 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 again this creates uh employment uh opportunities because it, it is a necessary part of the game and if you're flying around and you don't you don't give a shit about this frankly uh then guess what uh, eventually you're going to have to go to somebody who does and you're going to have to pay them and uh, uh that is why i like star citizen you know this is why i love the game because you know there are going to be plenty of people out there that don't want to do this just like i said in the career video and then mechanics and engineers will be a very profitable uh field because you are dealing with it and you are helping people uh fix their ships that they don't give a damn about any of this and you can say hey you know uh, we're charging this price for a coolant rod and and the guy's gonna say oh my god i'm not paying that much great you can't have the coolant rod have fun blowing your ship up while you fly away or go to your competitor or go to my competitor who's probably selling it at a higher price so um you will as just a general pilot who's not interested in engineering uh, look at this and say to yourself, I, I should probably learn a little bit. Maybe I'm not going to get into the details of everything we're showing here, especially with the material panel, but maybe I should just at least become familiar with this little multi-tool and with the uh, the um, sub-components, you know, as far as the power conduits, the coolant rods, the auxiliator drives, the capacitors, phase arrays, EM insulator, heat sink, kinetic barrier, all these things that are rods that will go into the ship. Uh, I need to learn a little bit more about this because I think if you're not interested in this you should probably look at this as your starting point and just end it there and say okay I know what I need to know next and uh, there we go ladies and gentlemen I hope you enjoyed this episode of um, our Star Citizen series hopefully I can get you some 2.0 PTU video out very soon I try to make this as succinct and intelligent as possible so that everybody out there understands I know what I'm talking about <laughs> I'm sure I made a mistake I'm sure DJ you're out there you're ready to pounce on me I'm sure Ray you're like hey man what's going on here you forgot to talk about this <laughs> but I do want to thank two people in particular at the end of this video I would like to thank um, Ray, obviously, for 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 all the amazing support, and I would also like to thank Copsy, uh, who also gave me hangar access, and I will be doing a uh, retaliated review very shortly. So there will be more Star Citizen content. I am recovering from the alien lore video that was over an hour and ten minutes long, <laughs> and uh, I am getting back in the swing of things. So as always, gamers, keep that frosty, and thanks everybody for joining us on another episode of Star Citizen Onto Games.